Welcome back, guys. My name is Mikey, your host for, of the, the podcast today, Photos by Mikey Podcast. Today, we have another amazing wedding photographer. She comes all the way from Toronto, Canada, Miss Amanda Soriano. So welcome, Amanda. Hey, Mikey. It's so great to be on the podcast and hello to everyone listening in. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your time. I know there's like a big, you know, time gap because I, I think it's like a three hour difference, right? Oh, I don't know. I have Google for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah no, it's a pleasure. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited to really kind of dive deep in, and pick your brain about social media and SEO and blogging. Um, but for people that don't know you, can you kind of give us a little bit of a uh, backstory about like how you got into photography? Sure thing. So, um, hey everyone, this is Amanda and I'm a wedding photographer based in Toronto and I've been running my business for now four years and, um, I've been in the photo video world for the last like 10 years. I've mainly worked in colleges and, uh, student affairs, uh, creating video and photo content. And so my journey really began when I got married in 2018. Um, I was looking for a wedding photographer at the time, and I really struggled with the entire experience. To be honest, I was super overwhelmed. I was the first in my group of friends to plan a wedding. And so after I did, I got married and everything, I was like, maybe this is something I want to explore and p possibly make a more easier experience than what I had and do more than just the photography aspect. And really support couples from beginning to end and so that's kind of how i started and this is where i am now <laughs> so how did you specifically get into the wedding photography side because i know like when anyone gets into photography there's so many avenues we can kind of branch out to right like family photos brand photography what kind of mm -hmm. what what draw your eye to weddings specifically so i'm the kind of person who will try everything like as soon as i have the idea to try it i'll try it out and so after i got married i i wanted to try out wedding photography and so the stepping stone to that is you know engagement photography and so luckily i had a friend who was um getting married and so i offered to do engagement photos and i feel like this is the the origin story of a lot of wedding photographers but anyways i did that and i thought it was a lot of fun and the couple that I helped had really great feedback for me and, and also really enjoyed the experience. And I realized at that point, this is something I wanted to continue doing more of. I also, after doing some research, saw that it was a good place to go in terms of photography, in terms of money and, and getting started. And so that was also a driving, driving factor because I also work full time. And so I wanted to make sure that the time spent outside of work was also worthwhile. Um, because it's time away from my friends, my family. And so um, overall, it, it felt like it made sense to me. And so I, I tried it out and, and then I fell in love with it. it. It's so much fun to me. And even four years later, I'm still loving it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, and I really love your style. I mean, like the colors, because for me, I do love like that modern look with just vibrant colors and, you know, like that pop that just like, you know, attracts me to mm -hmm. your like style so like did that come from like an inspiration from another photographer or was that something that you watched like a movie like how, where did that inspiration come from oh thanks so much for saying all that nice stuff <laughs> um <laughs> so my style of photography i like to describe as really bright uh documentary and also true to life for me when i got married and when i was looking for a wedding photographer i really struggled to find somebody who photograph true to life and had their subjects looking really natural and have, like looking like they're having a lot of fun. And I think at the time I struggled because a lot of uh, like, I think what was popular at the time was um, very like, I don't know, very warm tones. And I struggled too because all of the portfolios I were, I was seeing weren't very diverse. And so I couldn't find people who look like me um, in the wedding photography world that were edited to look, like authentically me, like the skin tones uh, is kind of what I'm thinking gotcha. about. So all the skin tones are super yellow or green right. or super pink. And so when I decided to start my business, I really focused on skin tones at the beginning because um, it was something that really annoyed me when I was searching. And so that was kind of an influencer for me in terms of my style. But in but when it comes to colors, like that's also something I really gravitate to just because of the movies and I enjoy. So 
um, like Juno or anything mm-hmm. by Wes Anderson um, and like Scott Pilgrim, like that sort of stuff. It, I love the colorful and fun feel of photos. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you ever get clients that like um, ask you mm-hmm. like, can you change your style a little bit? I know a lot of people um, may get that question from clients where I do like your style, but can you sometimes emulate this other style? Oh yeah, totally. Um, I've had two instances like that. So one time a couple uh, was signing their contract and they saw that I have a clause in there that says you can't put a filter on my on my work, which I, I recommend all photographers have. And they were asking me about that because they were interested in adding filters on Instagram and they wanted to know what the repercussions of that or um, the expectations around it. And so I basically said, well, um, I encourage folks not to add filters because my goal is for couples to hire somebody who creates work that they love so much that they don't feel like they need to add a filter because only then can you ha- can you really provide an amazing service to a couple as if you know you create something that they really want that they don't need to change. And so that really resonated with them, thankfully. And then the other couple wanted to do the whole direct flash, you know, warm colors uh, at reception. And and honestly, I don't take much of offense to that because like my co- my whole thing is authentic colors. But mm-hmm. if we start warming things up, it changes it a little bit. I actually kind of love when my couples come to me with some creative ideas. But what I will always say is that I'll do a variety. So I won't just stick to one style the whole day. If they have like a, like a vision for an aspect of it, then I'll do my best to deliver a couple photos. But for the whole day, I, I won't do that because of kind of like the earlier reason, like I want it to be, um, I want to be creating something as a whole that they will love and not feel the need to change. Yeah, I 100% agree. Because I mean, when clients come to you, it's because they got attracted to your style, right? And I always, mm-hmm. I always wonder, like, when clients may come to photographers and wants to have a different style, well, why are you coming to them? <laughs> and that's another photographer. It's like they want a little bit of both, exactly. right? I think that's what I'm thinking. But um, but awesome. So let's get into a little bit about marketing because I think it's so interesting how different photographers do approach marketing. I've I've met photographers that didn't have a website. They did all their marketing, or even wedding vendors. They did all their marketing on social media and Facebook, and then um, and then there's other photographers or filmmakers or vendors that you know, they really focus on like SEO and website. And in, in my personal opinion, I believe if you're a small business owner, like maximize everything, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you, it's a business, like I want to make sure I make the most out of what I'm doing. Um, so let's get into the website because your website's amazing. Um, and I really kind of, if you don't mind, I'm going to share your website if that's okay. Oh, yeah, I don't mind yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, so let's kind of share, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let me maximize this really quick. Cause I think it's, it's just amazing. Like the way it's <laughs> set up. And, um, if you want to give a shout out to your developer, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, full credit goes all goes to Carrie Mo creative. She's an incredible designer. She came up with my entire brand and website design. So if you are looking to overhaul your brand and find something that is more aligned to, you know, your personality, your style, please check her out. She is so good and also an amazing person and creates such a wonderful, supportive experience for her clients. And so anyways, I'm sure Mikey will add the link to her somewhere, but she's amazing. Yeah. Um, I was so happy to work with her because I, I had, a, before I had my brand re- like overhauled, it was something that was very like, minimal uh, minimalistic and like, you know, neutrals, like it was very beige. Um, and it was exactly like, you know, super trendy and like what you were always seeing. And it didn't align with my personality. Like I like to think of myself as really bright, fun and playful. And it, I just, I didn't feel aligned with my brand. And so when I reached out to her, I told her what I was hoping for and she totally delivered. And I feel like since I've done my brand rehaul, I've been able to show up more authentically and people have been able to get a better sense of who I am and the kind of work I deliver. And so, um, yeah, thanks for saying all that nice stuff. I, I'm honestly <laughs> so proud of this project. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really great because, I, I mean, you know, as I, I guess as wedding photographers, you know, 
the biggest thing about our business is the visual aspect, right? Everything we put out to the world, you know, when you want to show our best and our websites, like our platform to do that. And I know uh, as like, uh, you know, I'm not coming from like any web design experience. So like for me to get into like designing website, it's like, it's like alien, you know, to me. So same, <laughs> you know, there's, I know there's platforms. So, so you, you, you show it too, right? Um, that's the platform you use. Yes. So I went with show it when I first got started because I wanted something that was drag and drop. Like I'm not a coder. I'm not planning on being one. <laughs> and so I, I wanted something easy and I also wanted the ability to blog. And so show it has the ability to add in a blog. And so they work with, I believe that yeah, WordPress. And so I use show it to display my work. It's my portfolio. It's where I collect all my leads uh, via my contact form. And it's also a place that puts me in front of a lot of new couples look like looking into planning their wedding. And so I, I'm like, my website is a work in progress, but it's definitely closer to where I envision it to be at the, like ultimately. Awesome. So you mentioned that, you know, blogging helps you with like connecting with potential clients. Um, yes. Can you explain a little bit of like how that works in terms of like your website and SEO for those that don't know? Totally. Um, so SEO, which stands for search engine optimization, essentially when you're creating a piece of work that's going to go on the internet, you want to make sure it has a lot of SEO because that way you don't have to do the work to market it it'll essentially work for itself, which I love because my goal every year is to spend less time in front of the computer. And so I'm pretty strategic when it comes to creating content on my website because I want to fulfill my goal. <laughs> and so every website that I, every web, I'm sorry, every blog page, uh, blog I create, I think about SEO. And so what that means is I research keywords. I look at for what people in the wedding planning stage are searching for. And I try to think about what content would be really beneficial to them if they were to discover my page. Um, there's no real map for SEO and blog writing, but a lot of experts have kind of found tips and tricks here and there. And of course, Google will just, you know, change the script every couple of years and every maybe even months, days, who knows? So it's um, a map, it's a kind of like a trial and trial and error, but for the most part, as long as you're creating good content that serves the clients that you're you're making that content for in a good way, then you can bring people to your page without having to use social media, which sometimes takes a bit more time. Awesome. And I, I really believe that I think blogging is a great resource for clients, you know, and sometimes what I even use is like when a client already books me, it's like, oh, you know, they want to know a little bit more about a certain venue. So I'll blog about I blog about that venue that I've shot at. And so I'll share that link. So if they want a little bit more info about where they're having the wedding, you know, it's very useful, right? Or even like yes. potential clients, I believe like that ha we have a co client consultation and I know they're planning to get married at this venue. I'll kind of share some links even before the, you know, consultation. So it's like, it kind of almost like just keeps you a, a, a step above the rest, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, totally. it's, just, it's just the way it is. Um, but how do you create content? Like, I know I, we talked um, a little bit about that before we went live, like about AI, because <laughs> I'm not a great writer. And I always have like, you know, like blocks in my head that I can't think about how to even get started. So um, how do you approach like content creation? So for me, I want to create content that I know will get searches. So I do... Uh, some keyword searches and I wrote down some of the pages because to be honest I haven't done um, my the actual blog writing for a bit mm -hmm. but I use um, Google Keyword Planner or SEM Rush to basically find the keywords with the highest search volume with the okay. least amount of competition and sometimes I will still create content with keywords with high competition meaning other people have created content already for it but for right. the most part, I kind of start with the ones with less competition because it'll be easier to rank on Google. And so I, I think about SEO when I'm coming up with the blog ideas. But then again, to your point earlier, I think about the content that people are like the questions that people are constantly coming me coming to me to answer. So um, one of my recent blogs was top transportation companies in Toronto. 
And so a lot of people ask me like, oh, do you recommend any um, rental companies and that sort of thing? And so instead of having to go back and forth sharing links or searching for um, more information, I can just send them the link. So it's kind of like a balance between the two. Um, but in terms of getting started with the actual blog, I will um, try, I will I'll sometimes use ChatGBT, to be honest. I'll, I'll ask ChatGBT, write me a blog on top transportation <laughs> companies in Toronto, and it'll just give me the foundation to get started. So um, there's, there's specific rules around not being able to copy and paste the content you get from AI. But yeah. for me, I use it as a starting point. And so it, it helps me kind of find my footing. And then from there, I edit it so that it sounds more like me. It includes more photos because I want the content to be fun to digest as well. And so that's kind of the approach I take. I also look at like what's already out there and how can right. I make my content better? That's that's great advice. I think um, a lot of people sometimes don't, you know, oh, AI is, you know, too generic, right? It's sometimes mm -hmm. it's like it's probably pulling information from tons of other like content. But yeah, I kind of use it the same way. Like when I'm having like a, a brain fart, I just like, okay, you know, let me just ask you a question. Give it give me some inspiration. Right. And that's really what I think is why it's so useful, um, even for like caption creation like on instagram like oh gosh 100 <laughs> percent. because i mean you could, there's so many ways you can create captions i mean I, I mean it's kind of like i mean i've been on instagram for so long that it's like okay like I, let me try something different right totally yeah and i struggle with captions to be honest <laughs> <laughs> but with blogs i definitely use ai to help me get started Awesome. Awesome. And another, another platform I really want to touch base on is LinkedIn. Cause that's how I found you. Um, I found, a, I, I just was just scrolling and then I found like your blog about like, um, I think it was just how to use your phone for like content creation or something like that. And I'm like, that mm -hmm. is awesome. And, um, and how did you think about like actually using LinkedIn at the time because mm -hmm. I, I never realized LinkedIn would be a good platform for like just sharing content because I always thought it was more for like just connecting with professionals. Yeah, totally. Connecting with professionals and announcing your big new job change. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got on LinkedIn. I've been on there forever, but um, I, I started promoting my wedding photography on LinkedIn because of Gary V, of course. <laughs> nice. He was like, in my face, get on LinkedIn, that's where <laughs> the eyes are, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, so you probably saw my post, it was around a year ago, but I, I do want to go back. And, and so anyways, that's kind of what inspired me to be there. Um, and it was really, it was a really interesting experiment um, because I was able to put myself in front of people that I, I had never met before. And the nice thing is to, when I'm thinking about my ideal client, I think about like, you know, who they are, what they like to do. But at the same time, now that I'm year four of my business, uh, my prices are at a certain point that, you know, people need to be, need to have money to be able to afford my services. And so I've also started thinking about what, what kind of professions are they in? And so what's cool about being on LinkedIn and promoting my work is I'm being able to put my work in front of professionals who are maybe in different industries that I don't normally tap into in my, my specific audience and maybe audiences that are not even on Instagram. Like for example, mm -hmm. my husband, he's in industrial design and he never uses Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and so many people that I'm, I'm talking to um, don't use Instagram and they found me through Google. And so LinkedIn is just another way that I've, I've tried to reach new people. Um, I also found it, it was a really good reminder to people who know me personally, who are connected to me on LinkedIn, and to show them that I'm doing wedding photography. Oftentimes, they know me from my, my full-time job, which is, you know, digital communications at a college. But then they see, oh, they, they have a side business. Um, their work is exactly what I'm looking for. I should hire them. And so I've actually booked a client from LinkedIn, which was incredible. And I, I kind of retired at that point. I'm like, I, I did it <laughs> back to Instagram, <laughs> but I do want to go back. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I actually booked a, cl a client myself. Um, and I wasn't really even posting as frequent. I think I was just like updating my, it's when I officially quit my career and then I just started like posting some of my photos. I was updating my banner. And then it's just so interesting because it is a small world in, in a sense. 
um because you're connected to like specific people and then you know they found me actually it was through my old company that i worked for she was like she was actually i believe like the the marketing creator or whatever and she found that's cool my profile and then now and then connected from there and then i did her wedding so it was an that's awesome amazing. like way to like oh okay cool like anything is possible a hundred percent yeah it's so true i love that congrats <laughs> yeah, thank you too um but yeah let's um let's kind of dive in a little bit more into um social media again um so with social media right because i think some people still maybe have a hard time absorbing the aspects of why it's important for you know small businesses can you share maybe your opinions and maybe thoughts why it's so important for maybe like creators like us as wedding photographers totally um so my personal opinion i love social media for one reason and that's to showcase my personality and my expertise I find that when people find me through my website and then spend the time to check me out on Instagram, they get a better idea of who I am as a person because wedding photography is so personal. It's somebody literally following you on one of the most important days of your life and, and, and they're being exposed to your family, your friends, like all of these really important people. And so in my mind, like couples uh, should spend the time to really get to know the person. Otherwise, if you have somebody that you don't really like hanging out all day, it kind of ruins the day a little bit. And so... I love social media because the people who book me, they have a chance to get to know me without having to, you know, meet up with me at a coffee shop. They can look through my Instagram reels and get a sense for my personality and my sense of humor, which like I find kind of, you know, borders like dad jokes, dad like <laughs> like puns and all that kind of stuff. And so <laughs> the the couples who book me, they're like they think I'm so funny, and so that's always really good for the ego. <laughs> and <laughs> At the end of day, at the end of the day, it just warms them up more for them to more likely, you know, even just book a discovery call and then book me ultimately. Because for me, I, I think if you're in wedding photography, you have to be good at wedding, you have to be good at photography. So what the deciding factor becomes sometimes for couples is the person and and, and what it's like working with them and how they work with couples. And so through social me media, I'm able to showcase that part of my business. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I think with I mean, on the website, of course, you can create like, you know, your about page and really kind of showcase what your 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 hobbies are and things like that. And maybe like showcase like what your personality is, but it's a little bit more difficult on the website, I mm -hmm. think. And with social media, like, you know, you can really showcase what you like, maybe like through like maybe like because I like traveling. So I always show like where I travel to. So, and that's kind of like the, the type of clients I like to attract people who is adventurous, like hiking. And so, um, if I can, you know, do that organically too, that's always amazing. Um, mm -hmm, totally. and, it's, I, and I, and I know sometimes it, it could be difficult for people, right? I, what do I have to post it every day? Like what content should I create? So let me ask you this, since you have, you know, experience, you know, creating content for like a university, um, how do you approach like content creation for Instagram specifically? Because the algorithm algorithm is always changing. I like to keep up with what works because if I'm going to put energy towards something, it better be the best thing possible. <laughs> and so if it takes me an hour to share a carousel and an hour to, to create an Instagram reel, but I know Instagram reels are better and they'll reach more people, then I'll create the reel. And so for me, I like to follow content creators to get a sense for what is working at the time because it changes so often. Like for right now, um, Instagram said that they're trying to promote photos again and mm -hmm. carousels again and less reels. And so a couple months ago, it was all about reels, 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 reels. And like I hired people to just be behind the scenes to film me so I can create content. But now they, they care about carousels again. And so um, I know that because of content creators and who knows, it could change. But yep. when I approach Instagram, that's my number one is what is going to do the best for me and what's making sense on Instagram at the time or whatever social media platform you're using. And then two, um, what's manageable? Like how can you be consistent in, in a schedule? You know, people like Gary Vee say post every day, five <laughs> times a day, but it's, <laughs> It's not sustainable all the time, especially if you have a full-time job yeah. or, you know, other life obligations and you don't have a full team doing that for you. So thinking about what's, um, you know, 
sustainable is also really important and um, doing your best to keep true to that. And if it changes, like for me, I, I try not to be too hard on myself because um, otherwise I'll just stop entirely. <laughs> and so <laughs> social media is tiring, which is why I, you know, put a lot of energy into blogging because it's, it's kind of content that I don't need to promote that will still be found, but I'm, I'm back on social media now and I'm trying to um, find new, find new eyes. And already in the last week or two, I've already been able to increase my audience by a good amount. And so if you have the energy to put towards it, um, then it's definitely worthwhile. Awesome. I think the, the biggest obstacle for a lot of people is just like, like you said, staying consistent right and i know some people have full time jobs and some people have you know family they have kids and really i i guess finding the time is like the most important um i know there's apps out there like later that you can you know schedule posts um but yeah i think also something that's really important like you said is to keep up with what's happening with instagram cuz it's always changing um the algorithm continues to evolve other platforms influenced Instagram, like TikTok, when the reels came out, right? Um, mm -hmm. And even like YouTube, YouTube's also changing. Um, they're doing, you know, like recent. I mean, this is like the past year, right? They did the YouTube Shorts. So like, there's so many avenues as wedding talkers we can leverage. So, um, how do you, when you try to like market to your ideal clients? Um, are you very like curated in terms of like what type of photos you share? Totally. Yeah. For me, one of the biggest things for my business, and I haven't even really mentioned it yet, which is, um, you know, something I need to work on <laughs> is, um, inclusivity. So for me, when I'm curating my, my feed on Instagram, it's super important for me to, to showcase a diverse um, group like I, I just want every couple to feel seen on my page uh, to to the best of my ability and you know if I don't have a group that feels represented then I do my best to find opportunities to create content to basically you know attract those types of couples too so um, yeah so that's kind of what I think about and when I'm curating my Instagram feed is trying to showcase um, all types of couples whether they be part of the 2S LGBTQ plus I, IA group or, you know, different skin tones, abilities, um, walks of life. Um, I, I tried to think visually like, okay, who is not, who's not at the table and, and, right. and then try to add them in when I can. So I'm pretty deliberate about that um, because of my brand. Um, I also like try to do a mix of, you know, sharing personal stories, my personality and tips before it was all tips, 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 tips. But then yeah. I, I, I started feeling really bored about it. So now yeah. it's a lot, lot different. Um, so that's kind of my approach. That's awesome. Um, do you, do you share, um, like, let's say you did a wedding on like in this past weekend, or for example, hypothetically, you did a, w a wedding this past weekend. Do you share like sneak peeks right away with, with the clients? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee it actually. So every couple I work with gets uh, sneak peeks within the first 24 hours. And I do that one for my own marketing. Um, and also two, because um, that was super important to me when I got married, I wanted photos like the best photos right after so that I, I could share with the world like I got married and this is what I looked like. <laughs> and so it, it's, it's something I've incorporated into my business and a lot of my couples love. And now with, with even using AI and editing, it, it's super easy to do that. So um, yes, long story long, I do. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Um, let's talk about your client experience. I, I love talking about how everyone approaches this, right? Um, so if you get, a, uh, you know, an inquiry, like tell us a little bit about your approach your, you know, how you communicate with your clients throughout the entire process? I love this question because client experience is so important to me. And I've recently overhauled and elevated my entire client experience with um, a, my business coach, Sarah from Rebel Office. So another amazing person everyone should check out. Um, but essentially, when I get an inquiry come in, it's always through my website. And so, of course, you'll get DMs on Instagram. I send them right to my website mm -hmm. because... It's important for me that everyone has the same experience. And so they come through on my website 
which uh, I have a contact form that's um, fueled by HoneyBook. And so I receive the inquiry, they get an automatic automatic email that sends them to my FAQs page and wedding experience page so they can learn a bit more about what it's like working with me. It also is an opportunity for me to warm them up a bit more before they hear from me again. And then from there, I send them my uh, pricing guide, pricing and info guide. And so again, I use smart files with HoneyBook. And so they're able to see um, full albums, uh, client testimonials, and a video that I put together that is less about the experience um, when it comes to logistics and like admin and stuff. And it's more about my thoughts on photography. And so they get a holistic um, kind of window into what it's like working with me with that video. And then from there, um, they get on a discovery call. And then on a discovery call, my goal is to only learn about them, talk about them and not about their wedding day. Because again, I think my biggest differentiator with working with me is my personality. And I want that to really come through. And because I've shared so much with them already about the experience, um, they already know about it for the most part when they do get on a call with me. But of course, there's always room at the end for at the call to talk more about that. And then from there, once they've decided to book, you know, contract, in, um, invoice, all that, all that jazz, then that's when the, the true experience really does begin. And we start with a kickoff call where we essentially put all of the dates in the calendar. So that way throughout the year, they don't have to worry about what's next. They already know. And I also don't have to worry as a business owner to reach out to them to say, okay, it's time to start thinking about your schedule. All of that stuff is in the calendar. I don't have to remember it. It's I, I just show up. <laughs> and then um, I hang out with all my couples, which I know is something not everyone can do, but I do. I, I go out for dinner with all of them and we just have a good time and really get to know each other. And it's a big reason why all my couples are like my friends after the fact. And then usually that's on the day of their engagement shoot. But if they don't, we still hang out. Then three months before their wedding, I send out a questionnaire that asks all of the nitty gritty, which I know a lot of photographers do. And I put together a schedule that we go back and forth, making sure that it's aligned with their vision. And then on the day of their wedding, we, we have a time. <laughs> and then sneak peeks within 24 hours. And then six to eight weeks later, they get their full album. Um, and then if they opted for an album design experience, which I completely outlined an entire workflow, which is three weeks, happens from January to March when things are a lot slower for me in my business. So that is the exact experience for every single couple. And over the last couple of months, I've been able to upgrade it a little bit here and there. So like creating a client portal where they can access all of the resources, including a guide, um, little little things they can borrow for their, the day of their wedding, including like fancy hangers or ring boxes and checklists and all that sort of supportive kind of content. It's all in one pay place for them. So my whole thing is creating an experience that's super supportive. And so that's why I've created this workflow and I'm super happy with it. Um, I actually flipped the switch yesterday, so it's, it's totally live and I was doing it before, but now it's just completely elevated. And so, that's in a nutshell, my client experience. That's amazing. Uh, for those that don't <laughs> know HoneyBook, HoneyBook's like a client management system. It's online based and it basically handles everything for you, creates templates. Um, I use it myself um, ever since I switched to HoneyBook. It's, I mean, amazing. I mean, I mean, you could think about like, you know, back in the day when we sent contracts through PDF. Um, so mm -hmm. like <laughs> Google Docs was like, super you know just like for me looking back at that i was like man that's super unprofessional because it's like it just doesn't make me look like high-end like you know the type of clients i want to attract now of course it's like i'm in that mid mid-range so having mm -hmm. that experience that matches like your professionalism i think is super key um but tell us a little bit about that client portal so where is that like is that through honeybook or is that through like your website so it's through my website I created a password protected page through WordPress. And so that's where my blog is hosted, but through the WordPress kind of platform, you can create pages. And so I have a resource page there. And so folks can access my, my client page through a link that I send them and they put in my password and on there, they have my wedding experience guide. Um, they have my album design experience guide, which just shows them all their options for picking their album details. And they have um, my preferred vendor list, which includes 
all all vendors that are inclusive, so all welcoming of two S L G B T Q I A folks. Um, they have access to um, tons of mood boards. So sometimes my couples don't know where to take their engagement photos. This this um, this client portal has over like I want to say fifty mood boards <laughs> of different locations around Toronto. That wow. you know, they're I tell them they're not all my photos and it's a private page, but that just so that they can get, get a sense for what it's like to take photos there and um, what kind of backgrounds they can expect. Um, and they also have links to book time with me and uh, whether it be for um, to talk about their timeline or even just a quick call. And it's, it also includes um, my, my office hours and my kind of communications boundaries, which I love as a business owner because mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, I'm always trying to spend less time in front of the computer, but because it's so important that I provide a supportive experience, I want to be available, but yet at the same time, be clear about when I take calls and when I don't. That's awesome. I love that. I think providing more resources and just guides to your clients, you know, just puts you above the rest, right? Because um, you know, I think one of the biggest things we can help our clients is just to help them educate. Cause I'll, I mean, all, almost all of them, they're getting married for the first time. So it's yeah. not like, <laughs> unless they were divorced and then they get, they're getting remarried, then they kind of know the right. process already. Right. Um, totally. but yeah, I love that. Um, but yeah, let's, let's kind of touch base on like, since you've been photographing weddings for four years now, what's some of the lessons you learned in the beginning um knowing what you know now um okay that's a good question <laughs> i learned a lot of things the hard way let's start let's start there yeah. <laughs> so um i guess i could share things i wish i knew um yeah in my first year so i wish i knew in canada we have um you know sole proprietor versus corporation so i didn't really okay. know the difference i kind of did but really didn't right. and so in my first year, if I were to do anything different would be to consult a, an accountant from day one. So that way I know how to, so that way I could have learned how to set up my business in the best way possible. And the way I set it up was fine, but because I missed a lot of things, I had to go back and, and pay like lawyers to kind of refix mm -hmm. something. So, which is totally fine. And something that happens a lot and like a lot of business are running without some of the things that I you mm -hmm. know, went back and fixed. Um, but for me, that's number one, talk to an accountant, talk to uh, a lawyer, or even there's a lot of really amazing organizations that support small businesses to set them up if they're interested in incorporating, for example, because in Canada, you have to have like your, your, um, you have to have a minute book and the minute book needs oh, a lot wow. of things and you need to designate shareholders, um, oh, you need to God. outline who the owners are, the directors are. And, oh my and Lord. It's funny because I'm all of the things. I'm the director, I'm the officer, but I have to like, you know, have legal documents to say that because there, there are expectations from the, from Canada Revenue Agency. And so that's number one. Um, number two, I would say um, to make sure that you're, you're not overdoing it. Um, it's so easy to burn out as a, small business owner and and so really just you know thinking about what you need to be well and and healthy and I think I ignored that in my first year because I totally burned out <laughs> but now in my fourth year I feel like I'm way better I create boundaries for myself I spend more time with my friends and family and so that's that's a whole topic on its own I would say <laughs> um <laughs> and Sometimes in business, you need to just focus on things to get them done. And I think as entrepreneurs, we're, you know, naturally creative people and we have so many projects we want to do, but there are some things that are integral to our business that just need to be done. And so I always have to remind myself, like, this is something I want to work on, but I need to finish this first. And so I think having that frame of mind has helped me move the needle in my business um, and has allowed me to have the space to work on fun things. So um, those are the, the main things I would say. That's awesome. Yeah, I 100% agree. Um, a lot of those things kind of happened to me as well, um, where I was like growing too quickly. And I didn't realize there were certain things I should have done from the beginning. Um, you know, and then I kind of mm -hmm. like, didn't really pay attention on the business side. Um, and like, okay, I kind of like regret not doing that. But that's, I guess, part <laughs> of like, you know, yeah, part yeah. of, I mean, <laughs> I, and I, I have a business background, like that's my degree. 
And I just, you know, I think because I was working full, sorry, there's like a fly in my, um, oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, that's something I guess sometimes like any small businesses have obstacles with, right. And when you start growing and growing a team, you just learn things that you didn't know, um, unless you had like a coach or something. Um, but, but that's great, great advice though, that I think anybody can learn from. Um, so let's, let's talk about some of like maybe resources that you've used to help you along the way to kind of gain that knowledge. Did you, you know, did you read a lot of books, YouTube university or podcasts? <laughs> I mean, a little bit of everything for sure. Yeah. Um, I really should have put down a list, but um, some educators that come to mind right off the bat early in my, my wedding photography business, I would say include, you know, when I first started and I didn't know how to post people, Jessica Whitaker, she's great for beginners oh, and she yeah. has a YouTube page. Yep. I, I like watched her videos. I was like, this is how she works with couples. And so um, she was great and has a lot of free things. And then as I progressed, then I found Taylor Jackson who has, yep. you know, behind the scenes of him at weddings. And I also invested in his course. And so I love, I love learning from him as well. Um, and then of course, Ben Hartley, I don't know if you know him. He's incredible do, yeah. for the business yeah, the business side of wedding photography. And so I invested in his course and I learned a lot about um, in-person sales through him and like the benefits of being at different trade shows. Did my first trade show last year and that was epic. Um, nice. And then, you know, sometimes you have to go back to the basics and, and remember why you're doing what you're doing. So the emotions behind the day. And I, I invested in a course with um, Jonas Peterson and that, if you don't know Jonas Peterson, look him up. He's amazing. He has some incredible... Uh, workshops available on his website they will make you cry <laughs> um and so i love that that workshop too um and then of course now i listen to jai long and i follow his summit oh that yeah he hosts. Mm -hmm. yeah so i haven't gone to the last i didn't go to the last one like i don't go all the time but his podcast is incredible too the make your mark i listen to that when i just need some inspo and then when it comes to business i learn from um i just live my mind business oh jenna kutcher she's great yeah. um she has like great podcasts about uh storytelling and wellness and that sort of thing i would say start her podcast at the five minute mark because there's a <laughs> lot of ads <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's I, what I've learned. <laughs> yeah that's crazy when i like i'm trying to listen to podcasts and it takes like yeah. five to ten minutes just to get to like the good good stuff i know i'm like i don't need this energy drink this like <laughs> random i don't know mom mom subscription like i don't have kids if it's a dog subscription maybe but um yeah so those are some of the the first things that come to mind but i love reading books like um there's lots of books i could recommend too um because that's the only kind of book i like to read to be honest like personal development books <laughs> that's awesome any any um books come to mind right now that you really enjoy you know what let me quickly check my audible because sure. um i i I love books and like there's some really good ones. Um, okay, and so your favorite authors? Authors? No, they're all different. And I, okay. um, yeah, they're all different. I, I guess Gary V. I loved all yeah. of Gary V's books. All yeah, of them. Great. Unfortunately, yeah the 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 hook. I don't know Jeff, that. You Jeff, know the one right, right hook. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, left hook or right hook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one I couldn't find audiobook version, so really? I haven't read that book. Yeah, because I, I only do audiobooks. So, okay. Um, yeah, but all his other ones were super inspirational and I highly recommend. Um, Profit First by Mike Michalsik. Anyways, Profit First. That was good. <laughs> Thinking about money. Um, and then one more I'll recommend. Uh, let's see. They're all so good. Um, even the subtle art of not giving a, uh, oh, you have to swear on your podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I saw that. I think I was like in the bookstore and, um, I think that's my next read. I, I want to read that book. Yeah. A lot of the books I read are all about like mindset. So that one's a really yeah. good one too. Awesome. Yeah. I love like self-development books just because like, you know, as wedding photographers, we're always trying to improve the way we do business and then also our mm -hmm. life because, I mean, it is a large majority of it is a mental aspect 
to, you know, running a business and being on point on the wedding day. I mean, sometimes it is a grind, you know, like when you're doing like content creation, you're, you know, doing your taxes. I mean, like you're all in one, you're like jack mm -hmm. of all trades in your own business. hundred so. percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love it. But yeah, let's, let's switch a uh, shift gears a little bit, but um, let me ask you, like, has there been any buddy in your life that has really been the most influential like it could be anybody like your family or friends or even like someone that you know um you met along the way hmm. that's a nice question um going back to jonas peterson like okay he's he's a pretty amazing person so um he's before now he's all into ai art and so as a business person and marketer he's a really really cool guy so yeah um he is definitely influenced are you familiar with him i should ask <laughs> i'm not super familiar but i've kind of seen him through like the, the facebook groups right right yeah. yeah so he uh started his career in marketing and then um uh, shift over into wedding photography he didn't really care about it at the time um but then he started thinking about it differently and thinking about how important this day is for people and so i love following him in his career because he's all about storytelling and the emotions tied to it like he's a really amazing storyteller um but i also like him because he's super creative and and can see opportunities so he is currently uh creating art for uh, ai art and oh. he has this series called youth is wasted on the young i believe it's called sorry if i butchered it mm -hmm. and um essentially he created this art on uh, mid journey and and he started posting it. And because he already has a huge audience with his wedding photography audience, it it got a lot of eyes to begin with, but then became super viral. And so he was getting calls from Singapore, New York, wow. places in Italy to host galleries. Wow. And so, yeah, now he has over 100K followers on Instagram just for his AI art. Oh and my. he sold limited prints of his work for like over 15K or $1,500, sorry. Wow. And and made over 200k in like a day just on his ai art and so he's he's really cool because he kind of is like for me um both really great business minded marketing minded great storytelling but also is super creative and and knows how to put things together and so yeah he's he's amazing yeah this is his ai art like so incredible that's yeah okay now i remember because i saw someone share one of these photos on a Facebook group. And I'm like, who, who is that? Um, <laughs> yeah. And okay, now I know I, I put the name to the image. And yeah, like, I think this is the one. Yeah, I saw this one. I'm like, right. whoa, that looks really stunning. Cool. Yeah. So he's really well off now. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I mean, like, just the, it's so unique, right? Like, I mean, yeah. like, like, I don't know if anyone has this type of art. So mm -hmm. That's super cool. Super cool. He has like a show in Italy. I think it's Italy, somewhere in Europe for sure. Yeah. And he just came out with his mermaids thing. Oh, <laughs> so wow. I love it. Yeah. No, he's definitely one of the most inspirational people in my in my like my view. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Um, let's talk about a little bit about like maybe the most difficult part of running a business. Um, has there been any low points for you? Like, you know what? I had a bad day today at this wedding or I had just, you know, just this is stressing me out. Like, and then I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I I'm not going to do this anymore. Like, has there been any time in your like career where it's like, you know what? This is my low point. Oh yeah. I think if you don't experience that as a small business owner, you're doing something, something a bit wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, totally. I've, I've experienced that. And like every time I do, I learn so much and I find ways to avoid similar situations as much as possible. Um, I think like when I get those feelings, it's because I'm really hard on myself and I have high expectations on myself, which I know a lot of people do do that. Right. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely been that time. Like I'm trying to think like even one time, like was in the, I had this wedding and it was the worst weather day ever like there was a tornado <laughs> oh, no. like it, it was a tornado yeah it was maybe smaller than a tornado but anyways it hit my wedding venue wow and 
power is gone. It's raining, torrential rain. My husband, Rob, is my second shooter. He dropped me off. And we have to stop the car sometimes because branches were flying across the car and trees went down. It was it was wild. And when we arrived to the venue, they we didn't let us in. We were the first there. And Rob was going to drive back to the groom's place to take some getting ready photos. And I was like, oh, this is such this is such scary weather. This is dangerous. <laughs> like, I don't want you to go. And yeah. so I met. Oh, well, some, because it's dangerous to drive. Sorry, I don't know where I got cut off, but no I was so stressed to call the bride and say, like, I'm so sorry, but I'm I'm afraid to send Rob to go to the groom's place because like <laughs> there's cars, there's um you know trees across the road, like, oh, and so I'm a people pleaser. Yeah, yeah, I'm a people pleaser, so I, I I was so worried about that, but thankfully she's like most of my couples are she's like super understanding and mm-hmm. and i gave her you know a, um what they called a choice i was like why don't you send why don't we get them to come here early and take those photos here so that way we're not moving around as much and she was pretty cool with that but like little moments like that where you're afraid to be the bearer of bad news on a wedding day oh gosh sucks <laughs> wow that's um, insane um yeah i mean i've I've had my share, but not nothing like a tornado coming, <laughs> yeah. coming to the wedding venue. <laughs> I know. It's like, I hope it doesn't rain. I'm like, I hope it doesn't tornado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here in California, it's more mostly about like the, the heat where I'm right. at. Yeah, I've had, man, during the ceremony, I've had one bridesmaid literally just drop to her knees. Oh. Yeah, because it, oh. was, it was like, I mean, if... It was technically it was like 95, but it felt mm. like 100, 105. And, right. you know, when you're standing for like even 10, 15 minutes, I mean, like not moving, it could be very yeah. like difficult, you know, and the, the stress of the heat gets to you. So, yeah, man. 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So little things like that were like as a business owner, you're in charge of everything. So even like not on a wedding day, I had. I had to tell a client that Rob wasn't going to be able to join us on the wedding day and that yeah. I had to hire somebody that they didn't know um, because he had um, surgery, laser eye surgery. So he wasn't going to be able to take photos. And um, I was really nervous about telling the couple that, but I think what it comes down to is realizing that everyone's human, things happen. And when you work with the, like when you work with your, your people, like the right people who will understand that about you and not just treat you like, like um, the help or something, then yeah. you know it's it's great it's it it's a good situation for everyone and so just honest communication and, and realizing you're only human can only do so much exactly 100 percent um so what keeps you motivated i know like you've been doing it for four years um what keeps you inspired what keeps you going to continue to be a wedding photographer for me it's totally the people like I get the most inspiration when I'm actually at the wedding and I get to hear the speeches or be part of the moments. And for me and my business, like because of how I market myself as uh, being super inclusive and having diverse, a diverse portfolio, I get to witness some, some moments that I have never seen on TV. And so I think that's so beautiful. And to be the person to be able to share those stories online is, is super, super motivational to me. And so I find the more I get to do this kind of work, the more I get to welcome those types of opportunities. Um, But in terms of the business aspect, what motivates me is um, trying to make my business as easy as possible to run while still maintaining a high level of support. Because again, my ultimate goal of spending time away from the computer. And so the more I work on my business, the less time I have to spend running my business. So um, now with my new workflow for example I could answer inquiries while in the grocery store line (laughs) versus before like you know having to write everything from scratch and then coming up with something very enticing for them to explore Um, so I guess long story long what motivates me is the love I get to see and also my 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 family and my friends just being able to spend more time with them and doing the things that I really want to do yeah that's great I think um you know, when we really sit down and think about like running a business, I know for me, I have this like type A personality. I just want to work 24 seven, but I think, <laughs> you know, been photographing weddings for seven years now. I'm like, 
I there's other stuff outside of photography I want to do, right? Like podcasting and going these travels. So like like you're absolutely right. Like having that balance, I think, is good for mental health and physically. Um, so what do you do like outside of photography? Like what's some of your hobbies that you enjoy doing? Um, for me, I love musicals. Like I'm a bit obsessed when it comes to musicals. So when people are like, oh, play your music. I'm like, are you sure? Because it's all show, show tunes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, musicals are definitely a big passion of mine. Um, like Hamilton, Waitress. Um, uh, what's it called? Now I'm blanking. Uh, Newsies. <laughs> like the different stuff like that. So I yeah. love that. Um, I also want to do more traveling. I think the last four years have dedicated a lot of time to my business. So now I'm trying to get back into traveling more. Um, my husband and I, before we started our business, we've done like uh, Hong Kong, Tokyo, oh. Australia. We wow. love scuba diving. So nice. I want to do more adventuring. Um, but outside of that, really, I just love the day to day with my husband, just, you know, yeah. watching TV, Netflix. Like we watch a lot of TV and like <laughs> a lot of cringe TV, like Love is yeah. Blind and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I just love spending time with my, my family, like my, like Rob, my dog and my parents who live down the street and or in my in-laws so um that's that's kind of like like outside of the fun and like you know instagram worthy uh i just love the day-to-day -day with my family because i know how precious that time is yeah absolutely so what's next for Am amanda soriano like what do you have anything lined up that's gonna you know in the next few years or are you gonna stick with like wedding photography for for many more years oh thanks for asking that so <laughs> I am starting a new podcast and it's called the wedding field trip podcast. And so every episode is going to be either to support couples planning their wedding um, to make the day stress-free or super fun. So I'm going to have a combination of really helpful episodes and also just episodes where we talk about ways to, you know, make your wedding a really fun day for you. So talking about fun ways to entertain your guests, um, the benefits of hiring a terror card reader at your wedding <laughs> or um like little funny things like that so um that's going to be what's next for me uh in the next year anyways and so i have some really awesome guests lined up for that and uh yeah i'm, I'm kind of just gonna see how that goes and then from there maybe you know change things up uh, my goal is 10 episodes so after those 10 episodes i'll kind of get a sense for if this is something i want to continue doing that's awesome all right, so let's get to the la last few questions here. And, and these are some really interesting ones, I think. Um, so hypothetically, let's say you won a billion dollars, right? Um, and you're pretty much set for the rest of your life. Would you still be photographing weddings? <laughs> um, I, I think like... I think I would, but way less. Because I think with that much money, I would want to pour back into my, my family and do more of the adventurous stuff that I think, you know, barriers of money restricts me from. Yeah. Um, but I, I do love weddings, but it has to be like, you know, the right couple. And l luckily for me, I do have a lot of amazing couples, but it would just be a little less just so that I can make time for all the other things I want to do. I think if I could do anything, it would probably be um, to make some sort of movie. Like I've always been inspired by movies and storytelling. And I've always made excuses as to why I'm not doing it. But I think with that kind of money, I would have more time to do that sort of thing. So, so I think um, being some sort of film director has always been a dream in the back of my mind. Awesome. Um, with that type of money as well, would <laughs> there be any like destination wedding that you would love to photograph in? Um, I always talk to Rob about this because we always um talk about like we um like renewing our vows i would love to do a wedding on like the salt flats um like something like that or oh. even like trying to catch aurora borealis like, oh yeah like something really epic and in nature um or even like i think there's some a place with uh like pink water sounds like not healthy but looks cool <laughs> <laughs> um anywhere in asia i think because yeah. I, I haven't been to asia and i would Oh, I've been to Hong Kong, Tokyo, and um, Taiwan, but not to like Thailand and Cambodians. So anywhere like there would be really cool too. Um, 
just because of the landscape and that sort of thing. That's awesome. Um, well, it's been amazing talking to you and sharing your story to our viewers and listeners here. Um, how can people connect with you? Do, do you want to share your Instagram and website? Yeah, sure. So um, folks can connect with me on Instagram. So it's Amanda Soriano photo. Um, and I'd love to hear what you thought of the episode. And if anyone has questions about um, wedding photography in Toronto, shoot me up. And my website is amandaseriano.com. And that's, that's everything. Check out my podcast once it's out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And of course, we'll share all her information down in the description below. So if you would love to connect with Amanda, please do so. She's an amazing wedding photographer based out of Toronto, Canada. And uh, thank you so much, Amanda. Hopefully we'll have you back on another episode here. Oh, I'd love that. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me, Mikey. And thank you everyone for listening. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. See you. Bye.